Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of another code recollection on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by PJ O'Reilly for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. The day before my 14th birthday started off pretty bad. I've never felt so torn apart. I don't want to be in this messed up place. Dad. <gasps> The first big Switch exclusive for 2024 arrives nice and early, and rather than taking the form of one of Nintendo's bigger franchises like Fire Emblem Engage did this time last year, we are instead winding the clock back to 2005 and 2009 respectively to dive into striking remakes of a pair of cult classic adventures from the DS and the Wii. Another code, Two Memories, which is also known as Trace Memory in the US, and its sequel, Another Code R, A Journey into Lost Memories, may not have been the most obvious way to kickstart a new year. However, make no mistake, they've gained cult classic status for good reason over the years, and amidst many of the rather average reviews gained by both titles back in the day, there were plenty of trustworthy voices applauding the world building, characterization, and the writing in both of these slow burn tales. Now, if you're new to the party, Another Code Recollection returns and revamps two games from the defunct developer Sing which is the same super talented team that made the stunning Hotel Dusk series and Little King Story. Recollection brings back two completely modernized versions of the adventures of Ashley Mizuki Robbins. Both games juggle a fine balance of third-person exploration and point-and-click adventuring, but the focus is resolutely on story above all else. While taking their sweet time to ground you in their worlds, build believable characters, and present experiences that revel in a sort of everyday mundanity and a desire to have you live every bland second. In turn, the game will have you open every door and retrace every step before you're rewarded with tidbits of info and resolutions to the many mysteries that hang over Ashley. Now, a huge error on our part would be to reveal too much of either of the two game's storylines. Revelations, twists, and turns are the main meat of this experience and must not be spoiled. But if you're really that hungry, then you should probably go try the demo. So without ruining anything beyond the earliest of details, this this is a tale in two parts that kicks off when Ashley receives a mysterious package from her father in the days leading up to her 14th birthday. And this was quite the surprise for Ashley as she had assumed that her father was long dead. So instead of celebrating her birthday, she heads off to a mysterious island where plenty of point and click puzzles and long periods of wandering around or getting completely stumped by obtuse puzzles await. But at least she gets to hang out with a little ghost boy named D who kind of reminds us of Casper the Friendly Ghost, but with amnesia and a strange chest tattoo. Now, while the original DS version could be pretty frustrating with its puzzles and direction, one of the biggest and most useful additions in these very handsome remakes is their comprehensive new hints and guidance mechanics. As you maneuver Ashley around environments, which are now fully 3D and explorable, you can simply click down on the left thumbstick to have a compass circle appear around her, directing you to the next location you need to visit. You also now have a big yellow dot that marks exactly where you need to go next to progress if you need it. But another click of the left stick will remove it instantly. So thankfully, any Call of Duty players who bought the wrong console and game should rest assured knowing that they'll make it through the experience just fine. There's also a puzzle hint system which can be toggled from the in-game menu too. And we also really like how passcodes for safes and doors and information of this manner are added to the room that they're needed in on the stylish new in-game map. All of these aids are things that folks cried for back in the day. And one of the major criticisms at launch was the tough nature of some of the puzzles. With these features in place, Ashley's two-part journey is a much smoother experience and gives players a much higher chance at seeing these stories through to the end. Another major improvement here is the overall scale and scope of the rest of this collection's additions and embellishments. Both games now look suitably modern, stunning in places even. And as we've mentioned, the first game has been converted to 3D, so it's a much different experience mechanically 
than you may remember from 2005. There's full voice acting, a choice of Japanese and English dubs and subs, and even some cut content, a few new puzzles, and fresh music to tap your feet along to as you enjoy the laid-back nature and general ebb and flow of both games. On both DS and Wii, both of the original games came up with unique control methods to take advantage of their respective hardware, and this new Switch release follows suit. Utilizing the console's motion controls to wiggle a key loose from the underside of a chair is something you get to try out in the demo if you're keen, for example. But we reckon the first game does lose out a little in the shift from the dinky DS. There's just something about a nice dual screen setup that really does it for us, and one puzzle in particular was left completely void of that original DS magic. And if you played the original game, you'll likely remember what that puzzle was. It's also worth mentioning the art style here, which we personally like. It's really clean and crisp in motion, but there will undoubtedly be those who can't stand the loss of those chunky black lines around characters from the originals. Thankfully, there are some incredible hand-drawn portraits that are reminiscent of that trademark Sing visual novel art style. These are accompanied by little biographies of each character, which will update as you progress throughout the game. They're all written from Ashley's perspective and help you gain a better understanding of how she's feeling about each character at that moment in time. Oh, and before we forget, make sure to jump into the settings and speed up the camera turning as a matter of urgency when you start, as default settings make it really slow to move around. So away from a few slight annoyances, these are two good looking and involving adventure games that have aged remarkably well, all things considered. They may not be as explosive, fast paced, or oh so clever as more recent examples of the genre, for sure. But Ashley is a well-rounded, believable, and likable character a well-written female lead who carries the whole thing easily on her shoulders. Even D makes for a great sidekick too, just sweet enough without becoming sickly, and discovering the secrets, forgotten memories, and revelations that connect the two is a journey that's absolutely still worth taking, and one that will stick with you after the fact. Games don't get assigned cult classic status like this for nothing. Now while we still agree with a lot of the original criticisms related to pacing and how much wandering and downtime there is between revelations, we can't help but get wrapped up in the slow burn and atmospheric nature of this emotionally involving and beautifully presented two-part tale. Adventures that contain the power to fully absorb and arrest should you allow them? Well, you're in for a lovely treat here, regardless of the odd boring stretch. Now onto performance, in both docked and handheld mode, we had zero issues with either title in our time playing, beyond the ill-advised motion control puzzles. The new tips and navigation aids have ensured that, where we may have given up in frustration in the past with the DS, we had no issues bypassing troublesome spots and blasting through both adventures with little issue on this revisit. So it's a successful return to Blood Edward Island and Lake Juliet overall then, a successful return for for a well-written cast of characters, surprisingly mature themes, multiple endings that encourage replays, and puzzles that, while obtuse in places, get the job done admirably, for the most part, as you explore and rebuild the pieces of a broken past. Now Nintendo, do Hotel Dusk next. We here at Nintendo Life give another code recollection on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. Now, if you haven't had enough of Ashley Mizuki Robbins, stay buckled in, because I have a few of my own thoughts I'd like to share with you about these remakes as well. So the second game in the series, Another Code R, A Journey into Lost Memories on the Wii, never actually came to the US. It was released in Europe and Japan, and that's it. So this is going to be the first time a lot of players are going to experience Ashley's story in its entirety, including me. So thank you, Nintendo, for putting in the effort and for bringing these games to the West. As I've mentioned on the channel before, I grew up with Trace Memory, or Another Code, Two Memories. On my DS, I played it when I, I must have been about 13 or 14. I was about Ashley's age. And back then, I hadn't really played anything else like this. Maybe Phoenix Wright, but I'm not sure if that was even released yet. And having gone back last year and replayed Trace Memory, or Another Code, on DS, and then having now played through 
the entirety of the first game in this Recollection remake, I'm not sure this is a game for everyone. The puzzles seem to be few and far between, and some of them feel offensively simple, and it pains me to say that. Now I've gone back and played a little bit of another code R, A Journey into Lost Memories from the Wii, because I bought a European copy, and I haven't played much, but those original two games, no matter how cumbersome they were at times, they really did take advantage of the hardware of the consoles. And they made the gameplay fun and unique and weird. Even doing something as simple and mundane as crushing a pop can on the Wii lit up a little spark in my brain. But some of that joy some of that passion seems to be lost in this Switch remake. Another problem I had with the game is the fact that there are so many low resolution textures scattered throughout this game. You'll find notes, pictures, and items all throughout the game that probably have a lot of detail packed in there, but they're compressed so hard that the detail is just lost. And a game that's slightly similar in style to this surprisingly is Silent Hill Shattered Memories, and it's one of my favorite games from the Wii. And one thing that that game got right with its world building was how much detail they packed into the environments. Now both games in another code recollection have quite a bit of detail as well, but that detail is just lost due to the fact that it's hard to make things out. So I went back and compared some footage from the Switch remake to what we had on the Wii, and yes, it is a major improvement in lots of places, but in others, like take for example this coin that you find in the game. Things like this is a major step backwards. The Switch should be able to perform better than hardware from 15 years ago. And maybe this isn't a Switch problem, maybe it's a developer problem. But regardless, in a game where the characters, the environment, and the world are the important thing, the story and the players, the players themselves deserve better than whatever some of this is. And for a game that's developed and published by Nintendo, a game that has a focus on visual novel and point and click style gameplay, you would think that there would be some kind of implementation of touch controls, especially with the game's history. Even the Wii sequel implemented pointer controls, which could somewhat mimic the feeling of touch. Not for dialogue bubbles, not for options, not for puzzles. Another Code Recollection doesn't feature any touch controls at all. Now it may sound like I have nothing good to say about Another Code Recollection, but that's quite the opposite. As a longtime fan of the original game, I suppose I went into this with high expectations. I was hoping for a lot. So as PJ mentioned in his review, I think they absolutely nailed Ashley Mizuki Robin's character to a T in this remake. She's so expressive and her voice actor fits the role so well. It, it's like exactly how I thought she would sound for all these years. She's funny and cheeky when she thinks she's being talked down to, and she tells it like it is when she needs to. And while Another Code Recollection misses the mark in some aspects of its art direction, the character models are excellent, even if everyone's walk animations are just a little, uh, just a little strange. Now I have noticed the story has changed a little bit in places. Maybe the dialogue, or especially with the way that the puzzles are laid out, some of the puzzles have been completely replaced, which in turn changes the flow of the game. But nothing so far that I've noticed has been at the detriment of the story itself. So the way I look at Another Code Recollection is that it really is a reimagining. Since the best parts of Another Code Recollection really are the story, the journey that the characters go through, and the animation and the way that they're directed, it feels like one of my favorite childhood games was brought back as an anime. I get to enjoy it again through a new lens, and hopefully an entirely new generation of people, hopefully a bunch of teenagers as well, get their hands on this game, because I really think that's the intended audience here. So if you have a family member that maybe doesn't play a whole lot of video games, that might find it interesting just walking around this world exploring and, and seeing the story through, or maybe a younger cousin or sibling that's just starting to get into video games or maybe more serious games. I think there are a lot of people out there that could resonate with Ashley's struggles and her story. And while the game does deal with some sensitive topics, there are things that sometimes they do need to be discussed. It's okay to talk about them. I think that's why I enjoyed and appreciated this game so much as a kid. It's because Ashley's story was so real and relatable. And even though she didn't have a, a real voice back then, I could still hear her. She's a good kid. 
Now, of course, I've gone on rambling far too much about these games, so feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you're planning on picking up another Code Rec collection, let us know if you played the demo, or if you have a story from when you played these back in the day. I'm going to be reading all these comments. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you go ahead and recall the fact that, wait a minute, there is a subscribe button and you should check and see if you've subscribed to Nintendo Life or not. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you to PJ for spending so much time with another Code Recollection. Make sure you give him a shout in the comments. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Oh.